So what I wanted to cover is some of the basics that we, we do with the students here at Charles Sturt, we're teaching them soil science. We're very applied um, and we pretty much, we're all about how water is held and how it moves. And if you understand that from a foundational point of view, life gets easier moving forward, right? So um, as far as water retention goes in soils, water molecules look like that. They have 104 degrees between the hydrogen ions, right? And that's important. Uh, so it looks like a Mickey Mouse head. And what, why it's important is because water is a mo polar molecule. The electrons spend more time going around this big oxygen and less time going around the hydrogen. So you have slightly positive bits and slightly negative bits. And that drives everything from that m moment forward. Okay. How water is held is by two forces and it's all about the polarity of water that makes it happen. So the first one is adhesion, AD, ad, it's to the surface. So this is water sticking to the soil surface. Um, and so to give you a representation of that graphical, this is like a soil solid. Water sticks to it by basically hydrogen bonds via those polar forces. Now, because, and so that layer, that first layer of water on a solid surface is the layer of adhesion. And it's held really tightly, really strongly because those water molecules have free access to that solid surface. So the solid surface has little pluses and minuses in it as well that these things join to. Radio, water is held very strongly. The important thing about adhesion, it's really strong. The second force is cohesion, co, so it's water to water bonding. And so water molecules stick to each other and they stick to each other by hydrogen bonding. And so as you get further and further away from the mineral surface, because of that 104 degree, they get less and less organised. They're less and less um, fitting this beautiful structure. And if, if you like, think of a brick wall. If water, those hydrogen molecules were 180 apart, then water would stick together like a bricks in a brick wall, right? And it wouldn't matter how far away from a mineral surface you were, you'd have this really strong structure. But because of that Mickey Mouse head situation, the water molecules as they move away are getting less and less organised. And so they are weaker held, weakly held. So these subsequent layers of cohesive water are getting weaker as you move away from the layer of, of adhesion. And that's a fundamental thing that we need to understand. You happy with that? Righto. And so what happens is eventually out here, the force is so weak that you don't actually have water being stuck to the solid anymore. It might be stuck to water molecules still, but they're not actually stuck to the solid, so it's free water. And that's, that can drain away because it's not being held to the soil. Rightio, now where the rubber hits the road on that is in our experience with soils in the field. And so if you've got a large pore, so mineral surface here and mineral surface here, big hole in the middle, Adhesive water held strongly, cohesive water getting weaker to the point where water's not held or gravity is stronger, you'll get drainage from a large pore. But if it was a small pore, as you move in from your adhesive layers, cohesive getting weaker and weaker, bugger me, we've caught up to these ones and that's, they're held stronger as well. And so these small pores actually hold water against gravity. Okay? So, and to add on to that, small pores, think of a clay, small particles, so therefore small pores between them, a clay actually has a lot more surface area per kilogram of soil. So you have more opportunity for water to be held by adhesion. You can come in. It's so much like lecturing. <laughs> Are you hungover? Are you still drunk? Rightio, so small pores will hold water because the cohesive forces are stronger than gravity and large pores will drain water because gravity is stronger than the cohesive forces. The pores that we talk about have to be stable though and, and a lot of today's talk will be spoken about pores that aren't stable. Now, so that explains how water is held. How, a consequence of that is this relationship between water content, how much water there is, and water status, how strongly it's held. And I want to tell you how I was taught this. So I went to La Trobe in Melbourne. Nick Uren, some of you will know, was my soils lecturer and he taught me this. He also has an uncanny resemblance <laughs> with Mr. Hat and they've never seen the same room, which is interesting. But anyway, Nick taught us about this and it was a face washer theory. And he said, right, um, when you're a kid and he had a preamble, which I don't, can't share with you because of time, the sample hit me, but um, it was horrific. 
because I think in pictures, and it involved me thinking of Nick when he was about six in a bath, and that, <laughs> that I can still at scarring. Right, but the face washer theory. Here's the thing, you're in the bath and you've got a face washer. You got it? How many of you think in pictures? I'm in a bath with a face washer. <laughs> yeah. About a third of you, I reckon. Right, yeah. So if you get that face washer and stick it underwater, bubbles come out of it and all the pores are filled, right? At that point, it's saturation. If you want to get water out of that face washer, what do you have to do to it? Just lift it up, right? So you lift it up. And so at saturation, there's no force holding that water, the excess water in that. So it takes no force, zero kilopascals. If you lift it up, water runs out of it. You don't have to do any other energy transfer or anything. You just lift up, water will drain until it stops draining. And at that point, you're at fill capacity. Okay? And so to get water out of that, once it stops draining, what do you have to do? Squeeze it, but not hard. You squeeze a little bit, you get more water out, fair? So a little bit of energy. And so minus 10 to minus 30, 33 kilopascals, and so that's a, that's a negative energy, that's a suction. We're sucking the water out of the face washer, okay, by squeezing it. Now, not a lot, and it's minus 10 to minus 33, not a set number. Why? Because you pull it out and it stops draining, or does it? Is there another drop? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. You know, it's not when does drainage really end, okay? So it's a bit arbitrary, okay? But you squeeze a little bit, water comes out, and then it stops. To get more water out, squeeze it harder, more water comes out. Squeeze it harder, more water comes out. To the point when you're squeezing it, what comes next? Wringing it out, right? It's getting harder and harder to get that water out until you can't get any more water out, and that's wilting point. Fair? And now you think about what I told you about those layers of cohesion. What's really happening as we squeeze it a little bit, squeeze it harder and harder and harder? We're moving successive layers of cohesive water out of the soil. Okay, because every layer closer to the mineral surface is harder to remove. So between saturation and field capacity is free drainage. Between field capacity, where we start squeezing it to ringing point, that's water we can use. So that's um, plant available water and wilting points minus 1,500 kilopascals. Okay, and that's, that's a, a set figure for us. And then to get water, more water out of the face washer, and this is where it got weird yet again, right? Nick said, to get that last bit, you've wrung it out as much as you can. How do you get water out? You start sucking on it, right? And that's an image that scars, <laughs> right? So you have to put in way more force. And that's what oven drying does. You're heating up. You're putting more force in to rip those cohesive layers, last few cohesive layers off, and even some of the adhesive maybe. So that's unavailable to, to, um, to, to plants, okay? So... Um, where you have, is that the end or is that two minutes? You're, you're a minute. Thanks. Um, <laughs> that plays out also with direction of water movement. So where you have between saturation and field capacity, because it's free drainage, gravity is stronger than the metric forces, so movement is always downwards, no other option, always downwards under uh, free water in a soil that can drain. And once you get below field capacity, drier than field capacity, then Matric forces are stronger than gravity and the direction of movement will be due to the water potential gradient. And that can be in any direction, but it will always be from high to low. It always goes from wet, okay, where it's not held strongly, to low water potential where it's held strongly. And that's because water, just like you and I, all, we, all they want out of life is to be held tightly. Okay? <laughs> so, so here we have... Adhesive, cohesive, getting weaker and weaker. Here's one that's not as long. And so this water molecule, it will move to go to there because this is held more tightly. So this had a higher water potential, that had a lower water potential, and it will move, that water will move in any direction to where it's going to be held more tightly. It will always move to a lower water potential. Gradients always work from high to low, like a slippery dip. Okay? And that is what we try to teach our students. Fantastic. Thank you, sir.